Thank you so much for being here, Matthias, on our podcast today about innovators and entrepreneurs. Thank you so much for being here. First, it's my pleasure, Denise. First, Thanks for having me. Of course. Can you briefly introduce yourself and your role as the founder of your innovative startup? Absolutely. My name is Matthias. I'm here located in Steyr, Upper Austria. I'm one of four co-founders and the CEO of our startup Carbony, and we develop carbon removal technologies, which are basically there to suck out already in the atmosphere emitted carbon dioxide and bring it back and therefore combat climate change. This is what we do. And then sounds amazing. Very good Thank first you. pitch. What sparked your interest in developing innovative projects and starting your own company? When I was 10 years old, I told my parents, I never want to work in my whole life. They were really <laughs> shocked because I, <laughs> I'm from a working class family and they were like, oh, no, how can you not work? You know, but what I meant back then is I always wanted to be self-employed and uh, do my own little thing and be my own boss. So this is like really ingrained into my personality. And then I was, when I already started my, my professional career as an employee first, I felt very miserable. But I was never too sure where should I start, you know, what could be my, my bigger purpose. And then I heard of this technology's carbon removals and I thought, man, uh, climate change, the climate crisis, this is a huge topic for everyone. We need more and better solutions out there. And a friend of mine who I know since 10 years, he's a very brilliant technician. He's now my CTO. He came up to me and said, you know, there's this technology's carbon removals, the Green Deal. This is going to be the next big shit. Um, we should do something. I was like, yeah, let's do it. Sounds very interesting. Cool. Thank you so much for your insights. Let's talk about the innovation. So what are the key steps involved in developing a successful innovation project within your startup? Well, I would say it's always a very two-sided sword. On the one hand, it's great because you can be there's not a big market yet, so you can be on the forefront of something, right? And there's not a lot of competition. But on the other hand, it's very difficult because your product is unknown. The market is not yet established. So it's not so easy to find your first customers and to really get you going as a startup. So it's kind of a, a blessing on the one hand, but it's also a curse, I would say. And what is my daily job is maneuvering through those fields of, okay, how can we use this advantage of being very early into something and still the daily hustle, the daily grind is very hardcore, you know, because it's like not you have a ready-made pro product or projects that can be sold mm. right away. So um, you need to bridge this kind of uh, phase where it's um, really hard to survive at the beginning. But mm. luckily here in Austria, we have a lot of cool um, supports funding-wise and very lot of cool institutions that support startups which I think is important because startups and innovative things are guaranteeing um, our wealth in the future, yeah. basically. That's very true. Now let's talk about like tools and techniques in like innovation projects in startups. What tools and techniques do you find most affecting in, effective in managing and developing your startup? To be honest, since we are a remote startup, so the four founders, we don't are in the same location, mm -hmm. it's very important to be connected. Yeah. I could take many lists. To be honest, what is my learning when it comes to tools and project management? There are so many good solutions out there. For me, it's important that you're very consistent in what you do. Yeah. And then you take some time to try to understand this tool in depth and how it can help you, you know, because if you, a tool is only as good as you really work with it mm. in depth, you know, and everybody on, on the whole organization, it can be two founders, it can be a single founder. If you fill it with life, it can make your life easier. And for me, I've tried so many tools in my career and, and, and it, it always boils down to the same thing. If you use it and if you understand the tool, it's a support. Otherwise it's just adding Yeah. more work to it you know and yeah. don't overdo it don't make like 100 different tools define your two three 
tools that can help your your problems and make you work better with your team this is what you need so we are doing it now basically with the microsoft suit because mm -hmm. there a lot of different tools are integrated mm -hmm. of course they're not all perfect and there might be different providers for different you know um niche tools that could help us more for example in project management but in the end you know you can do it in excel as well yeah so is it also the so, Microsoft um, tools that help you to ensure that you're on track and that you meet your objectives? Definitely, but I think, you know, those objectives and KPIs, this is something where I see a lot of startups are struggling and this is uh, the, 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 the painful steps you need to take of, of professionalizing yourself, you mm -hmm. know, beginning... In the startup, you're very chaotic and every founder, I think, it resonates with the audience out there, mm -hmm. knows that they have 1,000 tasks on their table and they could do it all at once. And to really, uh, you know, delegate to other people, define who is responsible for what, how is the, are those things tracked? These are the, the most crucial steps in, in becoming a professional, um, like full operative company. Yeah, and this is something that we are learning and and growing and some sometimes painfully feeling each and every day. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. I think every startup goes through these phases, so yeah, we can feel with you. What is also very important about innovative startups is, of course, the personal and professional development because. In a startup, you as a founder are the whole company. So you should have or you already have some skills in personal development. So how important is, would you say, personal professional development for innovators? And why would you say that? Uh, absolutely. I feel that my startup journey is like almost like going into an intellectual gym, you know, where the muscles are growing. Yeah. Um, because you you will, it's like a personal growth journey, to be honest, which uh, again is, is very enjoyable if you are this kind of type, but it's also painful, you know, growth only comes with pain. And sometimes mm. you really, uh, sometimes I feel, oh my God, I'm, I'm not prepared for this or I'm not good enough yet. I'm not yeah. in the Champions League yet, okay? Yeah. So I need to bring myself on Champions League level. Mm. So what are my techniques? I try to exchange and, and get to know people that are maybe some steps ahead of me mm -hmm. and try to learn from them. It could be in personal meetings. It could be via LinkedIn. It could be in reading books, you know, checking what they are posting, to whom are they talking, yeah. what are they reading. Um, it's one of the main things, especially as a CEO, because I'm the kind of face of my company and the yeah. voice of the company. I need to represent those visions when it comes to Carbony, because in the end, Carbony is what we make out of it. Mm. Of course, they are the products. But we need to represent this vision and make it uh, authentic and, 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 and also feelable for the people out there. So this is what I try to do. And hopefully I can also inspire other people to do so. Because yeah. it's really my, my, my deep belief that people can be more than what they are. Mm -hmm. they, they can grow and they can learn things. And this is the most beautiful thing about being a human, right? You, you very wouldn't true. know where you could, where you could end up in three years from now. That's very true. And you talked about like in the beginning also like over, about overcoming challenges. It's very hard. There are some you don't even knew that there would be some challenges, but they will come to your life. What are some common challenges you faced as an innovator and how have you overcome them? I would say, first of all, there's always a kind of... Um, intrinsic fear of starting things you know of mm -hmm. really starting a company when it's getting real you know when you need to register a company and then and you understand okay now there's a certain risk that is that is real okay um so this is the internal thing that i would um recommend to everyone out there who has a dream start it and start it earlier because early in your life maybe you don't have so much responsibilities and and, mm. and just the stakes are lower 
And then, of course, in, in the daily grind, there, there are challenges that most of the times I feel you overcome things if you are really hardworking, yeah. right? If you dedicate time and, and, and effort and your brains to some f- solutions, um, then you can overcome those things. And at the same time, uh, it's always very important to look who is your team. Mm-hmm. Is it um, what are what is your skill set that you bring to the table, and what do your team members bring? And in the best case scenario, it's like complementing each other, yeah. so you could help each other out. Same time, uh, talk to to your colleagues, to um, to fellow founders, because they know those problems. Mm-hmm. This is something that I've learned a lot from fellow founders, because yeah. if they are already some steps ahead in their journey most probably they had the same problems Mm -hmm. and they can give you very, very good advice. So connect as soon as possible with other founders in the network, even globally. Um, This is the beauty of the internet that, uh, you know, everybody is maybe one DM away or Mm -hmm. one phone call away. So this is a great thing. And also overboard all the perfectionism. Ah, yeah, yeah. Like once, once you get started with things and, 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 you know, it's it. I think it's more important. Twenty percent, like the Pareto principle, twenty percent mm. uh, input, eighty yeah. percent outcome. And then you make the next step. And then yeah. you wouldn't believe on the way when you're in your journey how many opportunities and doors will open up. I've never thought, you know, to sit here now with you. Now we do. Yeah. So it's good. <laughs> Very true. There's also a very good last word for our podcast as well. That the advice to not be too, um, like to have everything perfect and because it's never done like a project, a website, whatever, just make it good and then go on because the to-do list will never end as a founder. So yeah, but finally, where can our listeners learn more about you and your startup? Well, my main uh, tool of communication nowadays is LinkedIn. So you can find me under Matthias Rettenbacher, AKA Carbon Sucker or carbony.earth is our website. I would love to connect with you. If you have some questions, just reach out. Don't be shy. I won't bite. (laughs) Perfect. Thank you so much, Matthias, and have a nice day. Thanks a lot for your time. It was a pleasure talking to you.